You're listening to the Tao of Indifference, sex, dating and relationship advice for an indifferent world. For more advice and tips, check out DaoOfIndifference.com or follow us on Twitter at Indifferent underscore D. Hello listeners and welcome to the Tao of Indifference. My name is Demetrius. I'm here with some smooth jazz. Oh, all right, all right. That was <laughs> What's up, listeners? My name is Demetrius, and you are listening to another episode of the Dalvin Difference. I am here with my co-host, who is also my bro host, Delaney. Delaney, hello. What's up? Um, today's topic is why you can't get to date number two. And if you are dating right now, you probably just felt a certain sort of oof, like oh, it was a gut punch. I can't get to date number two. Why? And we're going to tell you why. So don't worry. Uh, we're going to be answering some questions from the Dating Advice subreddit. Delaney is going to be reading because Delaney has been in multiple plays and I only play video games. Delaney. All right. Let's dive in. Here we go. Here we go. Number one. After the second date. Triple dots. Ellipses. Yes. You also don't read that part. <laughs> After the second date. Pause. <laughs> Wow, you don't put that in the script, huh? Nope. <laughs> um, thinking of sending flowers. <laughs> I love that you don't know what an ellipsis is, but you're like, let me just, let me read it out anyway. Dot, dot, dot. Okay. Triple, did you say triple? <laughs> triple dot. <laughs> okay, after the second date, thinking mm. of sending flowers. Good idea. And this was submitted by Flurby. All right. I don't even know why I posted the entire question because I already have my answer. But go on. Uh, uh, me. Please read it. Um, I, late thirties. Oh, that's why I posted it. Never mind. Uh, her, mid twenties. Oh. We've had an email friendship for about a year and only two recent dates. Had a great second date this weekend. Would would sending flowers to her at work tomorrow be creepy or awesome? Okay. Um, I remember now why I picked that question because he's mid thirties. If you're mid twenties, no, he's late thirties. Late thirties, that's right. Oh, crap! Why is he dating the mid twenties? Anyway, no, that's not that bad. So, um, let's dive in. Should you send flowers to her work? Nope. I would have to agree on that. Should you give her flowers on your third date? Maybe. I'm actually okay with the giving the flowers on the third date, especially because you are in your late thirties. And when you say mid twenties, I'm hoping that she's closer to thirty than like she's. I'm hoping she's like twenty seven and not twenty five. If she's twenty five, maybe not the flowers just yet. If she's like twenty seven, yeah, why not third yeah. date? But give them to her in person. Sending flowers to somebody's job is what like uh, you husband. do on Valentine. Your husband sends you flowers on Valentine's yeah. Day. You know, sending flowers, it's also, like, to be completely honest with you, sending flowers, you're going to get the cheaper, like, you're you're losing money on quality as well. It's always better to just buy flowers. Yeah. Because they're shipped there. So just don't do that based on that alone. Like, unless somebody, like, died, don't send them flowers at their job, you know? Yeah. Or, like, someone's friend, friend of friend died, friend of family. Um, or a family member, whatever. Uh, don't send her flowers to her job. Maybe get her flowers in person. Um, I would be wary of, just based on her age, um, as a good rule of thumb, unless it's like a, unless you're a flower guy, maybe don't give her flowers on the third day. Like, if you are somebody who will buy your partner flowers on a pretty consistent basis, yeah, yes. If you're someone who like, I just want to do this special gesture, no. You've known her for a year online. She probably, unless she's indicated that she's a flower girl, like, I love flowers. In that case, yes, but if not, go through, go back, think about her specifically and what she would appreciate more as, like, a special gesture of, like, we've known each other so long. Now that we're dating, I want to do something nice for you. Yeah. Flowers are the go-to because it's a symbol of love and all that kind of stuff, but it's just... It's the go-to, and you don't have to do it just because it's the go-to. You know, like flowers, chocolates, etc. Yeah. Do the thing that's going to be special for her. If it is actually flowers, go for it. If it's not, maybe not. Yeah. Yeah. If though you're, if you are like hell bent on sending flowers, um, maybe do it after you have sex. That's a cl- that that's like oh, okay. like right after like. <laughs> 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 
flowers. It's like we literally just just finished. I know. That would be wow. I'd be really impressed. There's just a guy in the hallway, like listening at the door. Like, oh, they're done now. Flowers. That would be hilarious. God, I don't want to do that now. I want to time that. Oh my god. I want to do that so bad now. Oh man. God, that's so absurd that I would. I want to do. It. Anyway, okay. let's go. Number two. Okay. Number two. How to avoid getting friend zoned after a second date from a 34 year old male. Oh man, are you 34 and you're still worried about the friend zone? Yeah. <laughs> um, I hope I never. Have to and this about was that. submitted by Savad Neb. Yeah. Um. Oh, okay. I'm divorced. And oh, okay. yeah. That's what All I was. Right. God, I pick really good questions, yeah. and I always, like, I read the, you read the question, and I'm like, that sounds dumb, and I'm like, oh, these are actually really interesting. Yeah. Uh, Thanks, I, dating advice, Reddit. Yeah. I'm divorced and still somewhat inexperienced with dating. Oh. I went on a second dinner date with an amazing woman that I met online. After asking her out a third time, she said she was getting more of a friend vibe with me. Mm. Our conversation on both dates was about 90%. Superficial small talk. I'm wondering, is there anything I could have done differently to make her feel like I could be more than just a friend material? Um, her specifically, no. Yeah. Um, let's let's not let's not let's not dwell on like the past and things you can't change. Because I'm really here to give advice for people who like want to change what they their behavior in the future. So don't worry about the past. You couldn't change it because you are literally not a time traveler. So forget about it. Yeah. What you can do in the future to not give off a friend vibe is not talk about small talk. Yeah. Stop with the small talk. But especially if it's like 90% of the date. That's a long part of your date. You do small talk when you have nothing to talk about. Yeah. When you just met the person. If you're on a second date, you should have been talking about the things you were talking about on the first date and what happened in between your two dates. The fact that you were doing 90% small talk leads me to believe that her talking to you wasn't even... She said it nicely and said that it was more of like a friend material or friend vibe, but really it was more of an acquaintance vibe. I feel like we're not connected. You feel like an acquaintance, and a friend is a nice way to say that is my acquaintance. Yeah. Because all we do is 90% small talk. What I talk about with my friends, always like personal life stuff. What I talk about with my acquaintances, oh, you know, small talk, small talk, small talk, small talk, small talk, yeah, small talk. So if you're doing 90% small talk and you're not talking about your last date and what happened in between, you're going to get that friend material vibe. Um, so try to have interesting conversations. Ask them questions that don't are not close-ended. Ask them open-ended questions. Ask them why, you know, they chose their career. Yeah. Not just what do you do for a living. Why did you choose that career? Or, you know, what are their experiences with this you know, their interests are like, how did they get into things? Or never, what do you do? Oh, I do this. That's cool. What'd you go to school for? Yeah. That's what I would ask somebody on the street, man on the street and stuff. You got to ask some really diving, like deep diving questions. And if you're on a second date, you should be following up on things that they discussed before. If they tell you that they really love orchards, yeah. you could look up orchards in between the first time and the second time you saw them and tell them all about everything you've learned about orchards. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why I thought of orchards. I was thinking of, I was thinking of vineyards. I was yeah. like, what's like a vineyard but not booze? No, an orchard, like an yeah. apple, even though you can make cider. Number three, number three. Did yeah. you have anything to add before we move on? Uh where to uh, to not be friend zone. Oh, that poor I guy. think, I think you got to stop. It sounds like he's carrying the baggage of his divorce with him. Yeah, because you get into, you're like, I have nothing to talk about with yeah, my wife. I'm divorced. Like, and it's like, you know, that's not who you are. You are you still have a lot to offer. You're he not just... A, probably does. You're not just a divorced man. That's true. He's yeah. more than that. He's a rocket man. Yeah. <laughs> I don't actually know what that means. All right, go on. All right, question number three. Where to go on a second date? And this was submitted by Morgan Donner. All right, so uh, looking for some advice on where an ideal location is for a second date. I'm a 23-year-old male. She's a 22-year-old female. For the first date, we did dinner, movies, and coffee. I want to try and make sure we do something more interactive this time. 
Um, oh, we mentioned it earlier in a different podcast. Go to a museum. Museum. Go to a museum. Go to a zoo. But if you're going to do something like a museum or a zoo or anything like that, you need to pair it with another activity. Anything that is very much like... I'm trying to think of the best way to put it without making it sound like bad. But essentially, a, anything, any date that involves slow walking needs a part of the date where you can sit and talk. Yeah. So any date that is purely slow walking, museum, zoo, Hot dogs gallery, in park, any th- walking in a park, anything where you are doing something, but it is not high, even high intensity, like if you're like, let's go for a run. Any date that is walking around and moving, you need to follow that part of the date up with a sitting down and talking activity. Now, you might think, well, we're walking and talking. Yes, but what you really need is, we're, you're, you have to remember that walking and talking really is walking, talking, seeing, hearing, listening, smelling, all these things. You're like, your body is engaged in the environment. Yeah. If you're in a museum, you're looking, you're thinking, you're talking, you're, you know, you're picturing other things. But you need to, at some point, follow that up. Maybe it's drinks after. Like, I know you want to avoid it, but get a drink after. Like, oh, man, my favorite part was this. What or milkshakes. No. Anything where you sit. Yeah. Anything where you can sit. And it clearly delineates, like, this was one part of the date, and this is the part of the date that's more romantic. This was the activity. This is the romantic part. Now I want a milkshake. <laughs> oh, man. Um, you know, I, I went to In-N-Out when I was in San Francisco. Uh, milkshake was awesome. Delicious. The burgers were good. They weren't as good as Shake Shack, though. But whatever. Anyway, number four. Thank you. Number four. That, I, I thought three and four were the same question. Oh. I was like, <laughs> why aren't you reading? <laughs> Keep going. All right, number okay. four. Number four is the final question. Number four, final question. Thank you. And it starts off like this. <laughs> I'm telling about to rap. <laughs> Got a little something like this. <laughs> so, I had sex on the second date. You slut! <laughs> no. Slap him! Did I just blow it? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean, I hope you did. Oh, I didn't. I was kidding about the slut, by the way. No judgment. Um, um, this was submitted by Fabulous Girl. Okay, so I met this guy and I like him. We had a great first date. He was a total gentleman. He invited me to his house to watch a movie for the second date. <laughs> uh, <laughs> long story short. Making out turned into sex. What? A guy invited you over for a movie at his apartment and you guys had sex? That's so weird. (laughs) Never happened. Yeah. He did not pressure me and said that he would be fine just watching the movie and making out. (laughs) Still a gentleman. (laughs) He said he wasn't a fuck him and leave him guy, but my upbringing to be a lady is making me guilty. But why is your name Fabulous Girl if you're... Anyway, okay. <laughs> I like to think of myself as progressive when it comes to this, but I'm wondering if I just blew any chance with this guy. The sex was great, and we had a connection, I think. He said he would like to see me again and would call me later this week. Oh, this sounds horrible. <laughs> but I just want to know if he does if he does want to see me again, if it is, if it is because he likes me or what he did. Did he lose respect for me? Um, all right, I'm going to stop joking because I don't want it to be like, joke, joke. So, in all seriousness, did he lose respect for you? I don't know. You have to ask him. And even then, he might be lying to you. Yeah. Did you blow it? I don't know. It. What kind of guy is he? It all comes down to what conversations you had with him and what indication he gave to you of, about his progressiveness. Because as much as I am progressive and say... Like, if a girl hooked up with me on the second date, I would have no problem with it. I would date her, especially if we had great sex. Yeah. Not every guy is me. And most guys are not like that. Most guys are going to say, oh, well, she gave it up on the second date, you know, so she's not, like, girlfriend material. Yeah. And I'm not condoning it. I think that's a terrible way to live. It's also sort of a very self-loathing way that men approach dating. If someone wants to sleep with you, that makes them bad. Yeah. You know, it's... But a lot of guys do feel that way because they have this weird programming. Um, so when it comes to did you blow it, statistically speaking, probably. Yeah. Now, if he's a decent guy, no, not at all. But, you know, how hard is it to find a decent guy? And vice versa. I, I've definitely been in a situation where 
I had sex with a girl first or second date, and then her opinion was, well, you tried to, well, you tried to initiate sex with me early on, and we had sex, so I feel like you're not looking for anything serious. And it's kind of yeah. like, well, but didn't you want to have sex? She's like, yeah, but that just shows me that you're not looking for something serious. I'm like, well, I'm trying to go on another date with you. It's like, yeah, but, you know, so. Yeah. It is very, so at a certain point in my life, I was like, no, I'm not going to try to have sex on the first date. Because it clear, like, even though I'm looking for a relationship, people assume that if you have sex on the first date, it means that you are um, easy or a slug or a loose or a whore, etc. So the odds are against you because, um, you know, society is fucked up. Sorry, fabulous girl. Yeah. So did you blow it? Yeah, but if you blew it, then you didn't really blow it. Because this is an equality guy. If you were willing and comfortable and straight up were like, yeah, let's have sex. And you were in control of the situation. And you had sex. And the guy is turned off by that. That is not a quality guy. He's not a gentleman. So, if you did blow it, you didn't really blow it. Yeah. So, you're good. Either way. But he probably, maybe most likely, will not want to go on another date with you. I'm sorry. Anything that? Yeah. I, I just want to say that. Just, just a tip for all women who think. Oh no! This is. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> who think uh, a guy's only okay with making out when he invites you over to oh, his house? Yes. <laughs> oh okay. <laughs> um, I, I, I feel like that that is never the case. Like, it's usually not the case. Yeah, usually that is not the case. If a guy is inviting you over to his watch house. movies at his apartment, he is trying to sleep with you. Yeah. Yeah, that is probably good. That's, you know, nine times out of ten. There's the one, per, there's the ten percent chance that he doesn't want to sleep with you, and he's just like, yeah, let's just hang out. This is yeah. low key. But he probably is trying to sleep with you. Yeah. I thought that was going to take another turn. I was like, yeah. oh, this is going to take a turn. <laughs> All right, Delaney, thank you. Thank you. Let's dive into the topic of why you can't get date number two. I didn't list it on here, but it's possible that if you sleep with someone on the first date, they will not want to go on a second date with you. And not that I'm agreeing with that, I want to make it clear, but it could happen. So, on to the topic itself. Why can't you get date date number two? Number one, you were dishonest about your looks. I'm talking about if you're an online dater, you go on that first date, they meet you and they're like, oh, you're 50 pounds lighter in your picture, or oh, you had hair, you were taller, you were shorter, whatever it was. If you lied about your how you look on a first date... When you show up to that first date, that person will probably not want to go on a second date with you because they signed up to go on a date with that picture, plus your personality. Yeah. Now, you might say, oh, well, personality means a lot. Da, 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 da. True. I agree. 100%. But if someone's dishonest, they're dishonest. Why would I want to go on a date with That's part of your personality. Too. Exactly. Yeah. If you think that it's okay to lie about how you look, which... Even if looks only mean 20% of, say, your attraction to someone, your honesty probably means a whole lot more. Yeah. Yeah. And if that's the case, just show up, just look how you look. You're a liar if you lie about how you look. Yeah. And it could be directly lying by using pictures that don't look like you anymore or don't look like you, period, or pictures that are old. Or you lie about your height. You lie about your weight, things like that, or you take pictures in a way that it is you, but it's angled in a way that sort of hides maybe your weight. Yeah. And I just want to be clear, you should look like how you look on your online dating profile because someone is attracted to you somewhere. Might not be the exact person you want to be attracted to you, but there's someone who is attracted to you. It doesn't matter how you look. Statistically speaking, it literally does not matter how you look. If you're a guy and you're sort of heavy, it doesn't matter. It it literally does not matter. Women are more concerned with how much... It's Statistically speaking, women are more concerned with how much money you make than how fit you are. Your face is the most important thing. Yeah. And you can't change that, so... It's I'm, okay to be heavy, so... I'm say if you get plastic surgery, but... Yeah, but then... Yeah. Yeah. Don't do that. Don't, don't do plastic surgery on your face unless it's medically necessary, people. Number two, your conversation sucked. <sighs> I'm going back to that question, but if 90% of your conversation was small talk, your conversation sucked. Yeah. 
Small talk should be a small percentage of your conversation. 10%, 15%. Hey, how's it going? Oh, man, the weather's been great. So listen, let's have a real conversation. Yeah. There you go. Uh, If you're worried about conversation starters, like what to bring up, uh, there is a very simple method for topics that you can discuss. It's called the FORD method, F-O-R-D. It's an acronym. And it stands for Family Occupation, recreation, and dreams. What was your family like? Do you have a brother? No. Oh, that's so cool. What do you do for a living? Why did you start doing it? Do you like it? What would you rather be doing? What do you do for fun? Oh, man, that sounds cool. Would you be able to show me how to do that? What do you want to do? Like, where would you want to travel? What are your dreams? What are your goals? Yeah. That is more interesting than how's the weather. It will always be more interesting than how's the weather. Here are some things to avoid talking about. Don't joke about rape. Rape jokes never go over well. Don't joke about cancer or death or AIDS or gay people. Anything that's like kind of offensive, don't joke about. Abortion, rapes, race rather, not race. race. Uh, Religion, politics. Just don't make jokes about these things. Just avoid it. You can talk about these things like, oh man, I read this great article about race. Mm. Interesting. Don't just do it in a polite way. Okay. Number three, you aren't paying attention to them. I've said it a million times. I'm going to say it again. Put your phone down. Put it down. Put it down. Put your phone down. Put your phone down. (laughs) Not a mistake. Put your phone down. Stop talking to the waiter. Stop talking to the waitress. Stop chatting up people in the bar, you know. Pay attention. Number four, you came on way too strong. I don't want you to be aloof and, like, distant or pretend to be something you're not, but you also can't... You need to show as much interest and attention as the person you're on a date with. If the person says that they really want to see you again, they can't wait to see you again, mirror that. If the person's like, yeah, it'd be great to see you again, you're like, oh, man, you're like my soulmate. You're not going to get a second date. Yeah. That's it. You're creepy. Now, if they said that they're like, you feel like they're your soulmate and you feel the same way, yes, go right ahead. Yeah. Say it. But you have to mirror them. You have to give them some opportunity to understand your personality. You might be the type of person who feels like there's love at first sight, and that's fine. That's a feeling. Your feeling is happening internally. You don't need to share all of your feelings when you meet someone. Yeah. And finally, finally, number five, you just didn't click. It just happens. Um, for all the work you do and all the conversation and everything you're doing right, you could just not click with somebody. It's as simple as that. You could just not be the right match for them. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with you. And there you have it. All right. Delaney, do you have anything else to add? How can you... What do people do on first dates that will not lead to a second date? Uh, what do people do on first dates? Try to follow um, a script. Oh, God, yeah. Those are always awkward. Yeah. Try not to follow a script. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of a first date that was ruined. You know, I usually... uh, Don't don't be insulting. Don't be overly sarcastic. Yeah. Don't be overly anything. Yeah. Just moderate yourself a little bit. I'm not saying you need to be completely different. If you're a very loud person... It's like this. If you are a very naturally loud person, when you walk into someone's home that you don't know, are you just yelling or you, do you tone it down for your inside voice? Yeah. So use your quote unquote inside voice when it comes to dating. Like, slow it down. If you're, if you're a fast talker, slow it down a little bit so they can hear you and listen and pay attention. Just moderate yourself. Yeah. Anything else? And, uh, well, it, it's, it's uh, similar to the don't be overly t- too much of anything. I was going to say, uh, don't, unless they like it, don't give them too much attention. Like, it's kind of like on an interview when you, like, when you don't break eye contact for oh, a yeah. second. Like, yeah, it's kind of creepy. Yeah, it's, it's all about moderating. Yeah. yeah. That's a great one. Don't be creepy. Yeah. Don't, don't, be, creepy. don't <laughs> be paying so much attention to them that you don't break eye contact. Yeah. Things like that. Okay, cool. Yeah. I think that's it. Delaney, do you want to say goodbye or adios or. Those be down here? 
That one. I like that one. Those are down there? Yes. Right, let's switch it up. Put some Russian in there. All right. Good luck out there. Bye. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Tao of Indifference podcast. If you liked this episode and want more sex, dating, and relationship advice, subscribe to the Tao of Indifference on iTunes or Stitcher. Follow us on Twitter at indifferent underscore D and check out the blog at DowofIndifference.com for more sex, dating and relationship advice. Thank you for listening and good luck out there.